Hello and welcome to sallyhughesbeauty.com. Um, perfumes I'm going to talk about. Um, lots of people ask me um, whether the perfumes I write about in the column are the perfumes I wear. Um, you're about to find out that yes, an awful lot of them are. This is, um, we're in my bedroom as usual, but we've nudged over a bit to my mantelpiece, which is my favourite part of my house. Um, and the reason it's the favourite part of my house is where I keep my perfumes, and perfumes are my favourite thing. I'm absolutely obsessed with scent. I love it so much. Um, and this is where, so, so all the new perfumes come in for me to test and hopefully write about. And if they graduate to this area here, um, that means I wear them in my real everyday life and I'll continue to wear them until they're gone. So the first thing that any perfume obsessive will think when they're watching this is I have stored them completely incorrectly um, and they would be right to think that. Perfumes are not meant to be laid out on a mantelpiece like this, they're meant to be tucked away in a dark cupboard so that they don't spoil. I am completely aware that this is a non-you way of storing perfumes but I don't care because I use them so often um, I just want them close to hand as I'm nipping out of the door because I always choose my perfume at the last minute. Um, so I want them close to hand and also they give me so much pleasure to look at. I think they're such beautiful things um, and they're such a part of my everyday life that I want them up here on display where I can grab them quickly. But I know, I know it's not the wise thing to do, but I just think it's a shame to have them tucked away. So. Here are all my day-to-day -day perfumes and I know it seems like a lot but I promise, I think I'm looking at them, pretty much all of them get worn at some point or another throughout the year. So on the left hand side I have candles. I always have a couple of candles on the go. I'm nuts about candles, they're my biggest extravagance. Um, but they just give me so much pleasure and if you get good quality candles um, they're such, they're a wiser economy because they throw the scent so much further and they're so much more pungent. My favourites are Jo Malone, um, Diptyque and this one by Bella Freud just because it's um, designed in the same, it's in, it comes in the same design as my favourite jumper that I own so um, I love that one and it smells amazing of tomato and fig. Um, my favourite candle of all time is Diptyque Baïs. Um, I if I could only have one candle for the rest of my life, that's the one I would have. It's got a really, really strong um, black currant and rose sort of scent, quite sour. It's got a sour greenness running through it, which is great um, from my perspective, because I like, I like those kind of herbal sour smells. I don't like anything too sweet and overtly floral. Um, this on the same tip actually is Blackberry and Bay, same thing again, it's got that sour note going through it and the Bella Freud candle too. Oh, little tip, if you are um, buying expensive candles, put them in the freezer the night before you light them. It definitely makes them last longer and the scent is unaffected. Um, moving on to perfumes, okay, where to start? I'm going to try and get through these as quickly as possible. Prada. Um, and Chanel number no. five actually, they belong together because both of them have a very um, strong iris note. This is Infusion Diarese. If you love Chanel number no. five, as lots of people do, then you will love this. Um, Chanel number no. five for me is just such a classic. No fragrance wardrobe should be without it. It's that kind of, I love that very aldehydic, um, almost chemical sort of floral smell, but with that shot of iris and violet, I absolutely love it. Um, on the same iris tip, actually, I've got um, um, Iris Silver Mist by um, Serge Luton here, um, which is another amazing iris. I just love that powderiness, like a kind of old lady's handbag. I love that smell. Um, so that's something these three have in common. Um, what do I have behind here? Oh, La Pluie by um, Miller Harris. I've got a few Miller Harrises actually, Le Petit Grain and um, Terre Diaries, another iris down there, I'm iris mad. Um, I think Lynn Harris is such a great um, perfumer. I think she just gets better and better and better and she makes proper perfumes, which I think um, is the way things seem to be going, thank goodness. Really beautiful quality ingredients, really inventive um, compositions. She's fabulous. Um, so those are just some of my favorites of hers. Le Petit Grain is more um, of a cologne. It smells like clean laundry and so on. La Pluie is more of a dirty, um, dirty rain, basically, is how I would describe it. Um, Shea and Blue. Shea and Blue is a new um, perfumery that I'm quite interested in. I like what they're doing. 
Um, it's run by um, a man who used to work at Chanel fragrances so I think that's quite interesting I think the bottles are beautiful I think the compositions are really interesting this one is a trope of belladonna which is very 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 feminine it's lovely actually it's a bit more feminine than I would normally have it's a bit more kind of blousy than I would normally wear but somehow it works they also do a lovely one called Sicilian limes and another one that smells like almonds sort of toasted almonds they're really interesting um, company Behind is Diptyque Philoscus. I've been wearing this scent on and off for about 10 or 12 years. It's this very figgy green scent, just kind of great daytime sort of fragrance. Whoops, what do I have here? Um, Lindstadt de Guerlain. Um, I don't think you can get this anymore, um, but I just love the bottle and I love the scent too. It's one of those scents that I prefer to smell rather than to smell of. So I like picking it up every now and then and having a whiff of it rather than wearing it. Um, what's this? This will be a Chanel exclusives. Oh, 28 La Porza. Um, lovely, lovely scent. I love um, Chanel exclusives. This one is does live in its box because I don't want it to get ruined because they're so expensive. Um, that's a lovely scent. Next to it, we have Jersey and I think we have another one along here, I don't know if this is Rue de Cambon, no, this is 1932, um, all just exquisite, exquisite quality, I mean, I, I love the House of Chanel anyway, I like how passionate they are about their scents, I like how much they protected their scents when the EU regulations meant that lots of ingredients were banned, they really took the time to do sympathetic remakes and so on, I really admire their stance on scent. Um, on to uh, Frederick Mal. Frederick Mal, I am obsessed with Frederick Mal. This fragrance here, Lo Diver, is um, my favourite perfume in the world currently. I can't go enough of it. In fact, I'm going to put it on now. It's so kind of elegant. It's just one of my absolute all-time fragrant favourite fragrances. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Um, I think it's Yes, it's the most in love with the fragrance I've been in maybe a decade. I adore it. In Fleur de Cassis next to it, um, also lovely, very sort of pungent, a bit more of a silk stocking perfume next to a cashmere sweater perfume, I suppose, is the way I would describe it. A bit more blousy, a bit more um, sexy and feminine, but gorgeous nonetheless. Um, behind we have Tom Ford. I love Tom Ford fragrances. I don't love them all. Um, sometimes I'm a bit disappointed by them, but some of them I just think are great. And the other thing I love about them is I do credit Tom Ford with kind of making proper perfumery cool and high fashion again, um, which I think was very much needed. His fragrances are, you know, they're complex, they're pungent, they've got real oils in them. Um, and I think that, that, that he's done the industry a service in that way because so many people were obsessed with these kind of light toilet cleaner sort of fragrances for such a long time. I think he's really helped popularise proper perfumery again, so I think that's great. So the ones I have are um, Neroli Portofino, which is a very, very citrusy, splashy kind of Mediterranean sort of scent. Shanghai Lily, um, which is a lot more pungent. Um, I also wear Reeve Dombra a lot, but I think that's in a handbag somewhere, so it's not out. That's from um, the Sheepra collection that Tom Ford did last year, which um, is perfect for me because Sheepra is my favourite fragrance family. Um, roughly, a, a Sheepra fragrance is a bit um, leathery, um, woody, a bit suede -y. It's that sort of smell. Um, it's my favourite smell. Um, Oriental perfumes are very kind of heady and spicy and sexy. Floral perfumes are obviously um, floral, although they can be much more complex. Don't think they just kind of smell of roses or bluebells or whatever. They can be very, very complex and, and not immediately smell like a florist shop. Um, I like all types, but in general, I'm drawn to sheep fragrances, so I really love that range. Um, Atelier Cologne. I love Atelier Cologne, really interested in them. They are um, a company, I think, like Frederick Mahler, sold exclusively at Liberty, and they are just bringing back Cologne, which um, I really appreciate. I love Cologne. Cologne is that very, I wrote a column on it recently, it's that very light, splashy, citrusy smell of hot ironing um, smell. And Neroli, I'm a big fan of um, Neroli, it's that very orangey. God, it's yum. 
smells like a really um smells like an orange grove beautiful beautiful and the quality of atelier cologne is really great and again like tom ford popularizing um complex perfumery again atelier cologne are really bringing back cologne which i am really pleased about because i love cologne um modern muse by estee lauder haven't worn this in a while but i'm quite interested in it i think it's a really lovely scent um i think they've done really well and i'm interested in um any Estee Lauder fragrance launch because they are, they do really take the time and spend the money over it. And it's a very big deal whenever they launch a scent. And this is the first one in a decade. So I very much took notice of that. Narciso Rodriguez. I love this fragrance. Um, it's one of the few fragrances I wear that's really, really a big commercial hit. Um, I went to the launch of this, must be well over 10 years ago now, and every single beauty editor there went nuts for it. It's got this very strong essential oil kind of patchouli um, blend that's a little bit like a posh massage oil, but in perfume form. It's very sexy. I would never wear it in the day. It's really kind of quite carnal, a bit grubby, um, but I love it. The bottle's exquisite too, and I think it was the first time that decade I went to a major fragrance launch that wasn't about, you know, everything feeling like water and clean and, and um, really sort of synthetic chemicals. It was the first one that felt earthy and pungent and real, so um, I've always had a real affection for it. Then Armani Privé, which is sort of the Giorgio Armani high-end um, fragrance line. Very interested in what they're doing, quite similarly to Tom Ford. They're kind of trying to bring back proper perfumery at a high price tag, but nonetheless, some of them are very nice. Um, this one is another fig one, a um, beautiful bottle with a pebble on the top. Um, and again, like Diptyque Philosophus, it's very figgy, of which I'm a fan. Um, great daytime scent, wouldn't wear it in the evening, but just brilliant for when you're kind of just hanging out and um, doing running errands and things. It's ideal for that. One of my all-time favourites, Yves Saint Laurent Rive Gauche. This is one of my all-time favourite scents. I'm never without it. First of all, it's got the best bottle in the entire world in that the scent never goes off because light can't get at it. It's really practical. It doesn't smash. You can sling it in your handbag and it's a spray. It's just an absolute classic bottle, but the scent inside I adore. There are so many reasons to love Reve Gauche. One of them is the packaging. The other one is it's the first ever fragrance to be marketed at women to buy themselves. It was considered to be the first feminist fragrance. It wasn't marketed at, oh, here's something lovely for your husband to buy you on your anniversary. It was like, this is for you. You need this. You go and buy this for you, which was really revolutionary at the time and the adverts were really kind of had a real kind of feminist ethos and the girls in the adverts were wearing trousers and going to work and that sort of stuff which I really appreciate. The scent inside, it's another Sheepra, I absolutely love it. I want to spray it on but I'm wearing something else. It's um, for lots of people it's the smell of their mums in the 70s. Um, it's that kind of it's quite leathery, but also powdery. It's so beautiful. I love it. And it goes with everything. And like, just as it was marketed as this kind of go-getting feminist fragrance, that carries through to the scent in that you can wear it in the day and absolutely then wear it at night and it still feels appropriate. It's a real kind of, you know, my best friend scent. I love it. Also, oh, the bottle's so great. It's a design classic. Love Reeve Gauche. will never not love it. Erin. Erin Lauder has released a new um, range of fragrances that sort of are like a fragrance wardrobe. This is Gardenia Rattan. I haven't worn lots of them yet. I'm still kind of testing them. I think the bottles are really beautiful though and I like the idea of the wardrobing concept. But I suppose at this end of the mantelpiece I've got more kind of light cologne type things of which that is one of them. More um, cologne. Jo Malone, Iris and Lady More Cologne. Black Root Blackberry and Bay Cologne. I love both of these, but I wear them mainly in warm weather when I just want something really, really light and fresh. <clears throat> and the same applies to Chloe, actually. I just wear those in really warm weather. French Lime Blossom Cologne by Jo Malone. They're all cologne, so their staying power isn't massive, but sometimes they're exactly what you need. You want that kind of hit of fresh citrus, um, and they really hit the spot. Next to it is another one of my all-time favourites. It's Guerlain Mitsuko. Um, it's, to many, the sort of ultimate Sheepra fragrance. It's a reference point in perfumery. So many perfumes are based on Mitsuko, um, which came first. It's an absolutely beautiful scent. 
not to everyone's taste, but it's sort of leather and peaches and it's very, it's unisex. It can be worn by men. It's actually lovely on men. Very, very powdery and deep. I love it. It's not for everyone, but it is just absolutely beautiful. And I, I love the Guerlain packaging as well. Again, very practical packaging, shuts out a lot of light. Just a little mention of Frederick Mal Lipstick Rose I've been testing recently. It is literally the smell of old ladies lipstick in perfume. And although I'd never wear it, I sort of think it's a brilliant idea and it makes me smile, so that's a good thing. Um, by Rido La Tulipe. Dropped it again. Um, by Rido La Tulipe, the reason I have a sample is, of that is that I had a full-size bottle and I dropped it on the floor and smashed it, which is deeply upsetting. Um, but I totally love it. Ter di Diaries I've spoken about. And finally, Roger Dove. So Roger Dove is one of the world's leading experts in perfume, but he is also now a perfumer. And I'm proud to call him my friend because he's so extremely clever. And this is his vetiver, which for my money is the nicest vetiver I've smelled in years. And I include in that amazing vetivers by Guerlain and Creed. This, I, it's so lovely. I, I think it is my favourite vetiver ever. Vetiver is a grass, it's a sort of green, citrusy smell. Um, can be worn by men or women, really sexy on men, but also on women. And um, Roger's vetiver extract is my favourite, favourite one. It's beautiful and it lives in its box because I can't bear for it to go off because it's so special and so expensive. Um, but it does get an outing every now and then. So all of these fragrances I do genuinely wear. Um, oh, I need Utalo de Adrian, I didn't mention, but all of these fragrances I do genuinely wear on my skin. I just think that they are, oh, that's a pair of false eyelashes there, attractive. Um, I do genuinely wear them all the time. I just think fragrance is the most um, exciting way to um, change um, your image and your mood. I totally, um, I choose perfumes based on what I'm wearing, where I'm going, how I'm feeling, and nothing can sum up that or evoke that like a smell. Um, I think, I just think they're amazing. They're also the most egalitarian, I think, beauty product there is, in that I appreciate some of these are mega expensive. Some of them really aren't, like Reeve Gauche is really not that expensive. But I do think perfume is egalitarian in that you don't have to be young, thin, beautiful or mega rich to smell like a million dollars. It's the one thing that you can do for yourself that just makes you feel really glamorous and elegant and classy um, and abundant um, for, you know, 40 quid or whatever. Um, so I think from that perspective, it's really unique. Um, anyway, those are my favorite scents. I would love to know in the comments section what is on your mantelpiece bathroom cabinet or if you're a good person, a nice dark cupboard, I'd love to know, um, I'd love to know what your equivalent is of my mantelpiece. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.